Hey, I'm Carbo, brother. I'm Chris Nelson, president of Carbo. Really excited to introduce some really fierce looking upgrades for your Keltec KSG. As you guys know, we acquired SMT Tactical, which makes a ton of parts for the KSG shotgun. Really phenomenal bullpup shotgun. I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. Really enjoying a lot of these new upgrades too. So we got the breacher barrel nut and the bayonet spikes on here. This is freaking serious hardware. 4140 pre-hardened steel, really phenomenal stuff. Very sharp, but fun and dangerous. And then some new followers back here. A must have, real simple, easy, but very functional upgrade. Some really high viz followers and PTFE Teflon coating, which you know we like around here for a lot of our trigger jobs. We've used that, which the PTFE Teflon coating is a really fantastic idea for these mag tubes. You don't want those things to get stuck up there. So it's gonna help increase lubricity, keep them flowing as you're throwing rounds down range. Let's go ahead and put these babies in. Before we go any further, let's go ahead and check our shotguns together, make sure they're clear. Check the chamber, check the bolt face, check the magazine tubes. The shotgun's clear. Parts and tools needed for this build, 316 series stainless steel followers or your choice of 6061 aircraft grade aluminum followers that are powder coated in PTFE, Teflon, high vis orange. Bayonet spikes, these are 4140 pre-hardened steel. Breacher barrel nut, which is 4140 pre-hardened steel. Then either your choice of the four point or the six point barrel nut wrench, depending on what type of barrel nut you've got. For the older version KSGs, it's got a four point barrel nut wrench. Newer production is the six point. You're also gonna need a KSG vice block, an amazing handy tool. Also the mag bolt wrench, your follower nut wrench, the 2.5 millimeter Allen key or T handle wrench like I've got here. Two 1 16th inch punches, 3 8 inch Allen key, a 7 8 socket and wrench, also a 7 8 crescent wrench. You're going to need a piece of cardboard. Then you're also going to need masking tape, bottle of CLP or gun oil. And as always, guys, make sure you're wearing iPro. All right, first step is to remove the factory pick rail. You notice that it actually locates on top of this mag plate right here. So it's two screws, one here, one here, just a two and a half millimeter Allen key. I'm just dropping it in the vise like that with a towel. It's good to go, I'm not holding it down or cinching it down. And these things are on there pretty tight, so they'll snap loose on you. It does help to have this T-handle wrench, but not necessary. Any two and a half millimeter will work. But I do like how easy it is. All right, take the rail off, set that aside. Good to go. Now that our pick rail's off, we'll go ahead and take our KSG vice block and slide it right over that mag plate right here. You see how it fits and hugs it nicely. Now it's really gonna cinch it up tight once we drop it inside the vise and give it a good few cranks. You see how it'll just rest like that upside down in the vise block. Now we'll go ahead and tighten it up. Now it does help if you rest your buttstock end of the KSG on something, keep it all level. All right, really cranking it down here. Oh yeah, that's nice and snug, and that's exactly what you want. We're about to go to town on this barrel nut. Now, if you got a new production KSG, you're gonna have the six point barrel nut, so you'll need the six point barrel nut wrench. Go ahead and take that wrench, put it inside a seven eighths inch socket, right? Go ahead and line up the pins. Now that our KSG is in the vice block good and tight, we're gonna go ahead and take our six point barrel nut wrench. This is the newer production KSG, so it takes a six point barrel nut wrench. It's got six slots on it. If you've got an older production KSG, you're gonna need the four point barrel nut wrench and you'll have four slots on your barrel nut. Take your barrel nut wrench, go ahead and put it inside a seven eighths inch socket. Then we're gonna go ahead and line up the pins inside the wrench. All right, I wanna get a good point of leverage here. So right up top center, keep it all nice and straight and even and I'm gonna just push, there we go. Man, I'm telling you, this vice block makes a world of difference here. I mean, before it was just a nightmare trying to get this thing off. So that is how easy it is now that we've got the proper tool and equipment. Really makes a night and day difference when it comes to taking off this barrel nut. I'm telling you, this vice block is a must have. Has totally changed the way we disassemble the KSG now. Phenomenal tool. I must have, can't recommend it enough. Really recommend the KSG vice block. You can see how simple and easy that is. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove these two mag plugs. Now we're gonna take our mag plug wrench and we'll go ahead and loosen up both of these mag plugs right here. Now it's a uniform set of turns per side. Now that's pretty snug, all right? And that's why it is helpful to have this actual geometry right here so that you can easily break these things loose. But I broke it loose and then I gave it another two turns, so I want to do the same over here, all right? 
So it's nice and lined up. You can see how it fits in there really well. And there you go. So it really does make a world of difference having the right equipment. I mean, this can be a really frustrating process. And like I said, we're gonna go even, all right? So a little bit on each side, all right? Same amount of turns, roughly. Doesn't have to be exactly precise, but close enough, all right? And the cool thing is you can see how this thickness fits in here like this. So we really did think about as much of this as possible. We wanna make things useful. You know, if we're gonna provide a tool, it's gotta be a good solution all the way around. It can't just be a very limited partial solution. So here it is, the mag plug wrench. You can see I'm going back and forth here. All right, you'll know when you're at the end, it'll just keep spinning freely more or less. And at that point, it's pretty clear that we are done unthreading these mag plugs. And now we need to go ahead and move on to the next step. Next step is pretty simple. Now that we've loosened up these mag plugs, we can go ahead and just pull back on the actual shotgun, wiggling it up and down gently, and it'll just come right out like that. Easy enough. And there's our mag plate still sitting in the KSG vice block. Solid, secure. Good to go. Typically, you wouldn't have to completely remove your mag plug. You can leave them retained in the actual mag plate itself. But since we're putting in the bayonet spikes, we will have to remove these actual mag plugs. So let's go ahead and set up our vise so that we can do that. Loosen it up, and I'm going to reposition everything here. clamp down nice and tight on the actual mag plate. So what I'm gonna do is remove these bolts right here, which are the mag plugs, and they've got little tiny retaining rings you can see down in there. I'm gonna go ahead and take my flathead screwdriver and just pry it apart. So I take my bigger screwdriver and I spread it apart. And take your smaller screwdriver just to pull it back off that shoulder. There you go, and just push it right through like that. So here's one mag plug out. Go ahead and set that aside. We'll go ahead and pull out the actual retaining ring as well. Set that aside, and we're gonna do the same over here. So go ahead and separate that ring with your bigger screwdriver, just like that. Now we take our smaller screwdriver and pull it back. Got that bite, take your bigger one. There you go. Now we're pushing down on that bolt as well, trying to wiggle it out of there. There you go. Now you only need to do this if you're replacing the actual mag plugs with the bayonet spikes, which will just slide right in like that, all right? Good to go. Now you can go ahead and set your mag plate and vice block aside. All right, now that the mag plate is off the KSG, we can just take a towel, press it in just like that. Then you're gonna take your shim that we cut out earlier, and you're gonna stuff it in there as well. And we're gonna set the barrel inside of the vise. Now the good thing is, is that we can get the whole barrel in there and then get a nice even pressure on it. We're not trying to crank it in so tight that we disfigure the barrel. We just wanna get it snug, but you're just gonna push down on top of the KSG as you're tightening it up and you just want it to be snug right there. When you start to feel that resistance, check it. There we go. It's good. We don't want to go any more than that. We don't want to crush the barrel. So that's good. Rock solid. Now that our barrel is located in the vise, all it is is held in by that towel and that piece of cardboard. So we can't really torque down like crazy on these. Fortunately, these two mag plugs aren't under a ton of torque and this tool is going to assist with that. So it will make it a lot easier, more uniform. You can see with this tool, there's two notches there. These two notches will locate into any of the four notches here. So either like that or like that, doesn't matter. And then the bolt is gonna go in and you're just gonna snug it up by hand 
and then give it a quarter turn with your 3 8 inch Allen key. All right. Yeah, make sure that barrel doesn't slide around on you. It's going to naturally want to. There's not a whole lot of gripping power doing it this way. This is exactly why we don't do it this way for the barrel nut because the barrel nut's under so much torque. Well, you just tear up your whole firearm doing that. Now go ahead and take your 7 8 inch deep socket. Go ahead and slide it right over the mag plug tool and we're going to loosen it right up. All right, pretty easy. I'm just unscrewing it by hand. Now be careful, it is under a lot of tension. So as you get to those last few threads, there we go. So there's the mag plug spring right there. It's pretty long. All right, that's okay if you get them mixed up. It's not gonna be the end of the world, but we'll do our best to keep them separated. Now we need to get the actual plastic follower out of there, and I'll show you how to do that here in a second. Let's go ahead and remove this other mag plug. But before we can do that, we've got to actually get the tool off the existing mag plug. All right, so now we want to separate the mag plug down here from the actual follower nut tool up here. So we're going to take our 7 8 inch crescent wrench. All right, and we'll go ahead and just get it to locate on the nut like so. Then take your 3 8 inch Allen key, and we're going to go ahead and twist them opposite directions and then unthread that bolt just like so. All right, bolt comes out and there's the follower nut tool as well. So there's the tool and here's the actual mag plug. So you can see those threads there and you can see how that tool locates inside those notches and then how that bolt goes in and locates against the actual plug and how it's one big universal rotation, which is nice. You got a lot of grip now, a lot of surface area to wrench on, whereas before you had absolutely nothing. You'd be trying to use a flathead screwdriver and that would be terrible. So there we go. Let's go ahead and get the other one out. Now that we've got our follower nut tool free from the other mag bolt, we'll go ahead and do the same thing to the second one here. So we can go ahead and get it to locate. Those two tips, we can get them to locate right there inside the actual follower. And then take our bolt, thread it in by hand. All right, good and snug. Then we'll take our 3 8 inch Allen key, give it a little quarter turn, all right? Now we'll go ahead and take our 7 8 inch deep socket, get it to locate on the follower nut tool, and take it off. Easy as that. Really makes the world of difference having the right equipment. All right, be careful. It is under tension. So we're getting to the end there. Okay. There's the spring. And we'll keep it separated. Not the end of the world if they got mixed up. Now this time we can go ahead and leave the follower with the follower nut tool for just a second. We might as well go ahead and replace these followers now and then we're gonna need this to put it back together anyway. So we'll leave it together right here, right now. Now to remove your followers, here's a neat little trick. Now make sure that your selector switch is in the center and then you're gonna go ahead and take one of those springs that we just removed from the mag tube and use that spring. Now carefully, you're pushing the plastic follower out with the actual spring, all right? Okay, until you feel that resistance, you know you've got it to the end. Now just be careful when you're removing this spring, make sure your lifter is all the way down, all right? You don't want that to grab your spring. And that's it. Real simple, no risk of damaging the spring as long as you're paying attention as you're removing it. You don't want to stretch the spring, of course. All right, so we got one follower pushed all the way down. Now let's push the other one all the way down. This makes it so much easier. And just take your time with it. No need to be in a real rush. There, I got one completely out right there. That was easy. All right, boom. Spring is intact, good to go. And that made life a lot simpler. So we got the plastic followers out. Now let's go ahead and put some improved followers in there. Well, there you go, guys. There they are stacked up against each other. You got your factory plastic followers here. You got your 316 stainless steel followers here. And you got your PTFE Teflon coated followers right here in high vis orange, which is really easy to see. I'm a huge fan of these. I really do like them. But I'm also a huge fan of the stainless. It's really a toss up between the two. Which one is better? You got a few different schools of thought here. Obviously, the bigger hole is easier to clean, but also allows in some more dirt than the smaller hole. It's just preference whatever it comes down to your choice either way they're far superior over the plastic ones you just can't beat stainless steel and then ptfe coated aluminum phenomenal followers these 
you know, whatever. These are just factory. Not everybody wants to upgrade this stuff, so it's you know, it helps keep costs down. But now you can go ahead and make these improvements yourself, and it's much easier to see these, and that's a big bonus. Either way, it's much easier to see when you're out of ammo with the stainless steel or the orange Teflon. You got a major advantage there, just being able to see out of your peripheral when one tube's empty, you know to switch to the other. Let's go ahead and put the orange followers in. I'm excited to see what these look like. All right, so take your CLP or gun oil, any kind's fine, and go ahead and just coat them up real nice, just so it helps with the installation and also just good to keep them nice and lubricated you want them to just slide through there like butter alright now we'll go ahead and insert one in each tube alright obviously this face going forward okay you can see them right there ready to go now we'll take our spring and we'll insert that right behind it alright now we just want to do a quick visual down here make sure it's lined up there. You don't want it to be crooked or anything for some weird reason. And then we keep pushing the spring all the way in and make sure you've got one of your mag plugs handy, specifically that one that's already in the follower nut tool, remember? So we'll take that and we'll go ahead and get that threaded. All right, you see I captured the spring right there on the actual mag plug. Now I've got some good leverage here with the tool since it was already inserted, which is handy, right? Glad we left it like that. And we'll go ahead and thread it in by hand. All right, hand tight. Now we'll go ahead and take our socket wrench. And we'll just snug it up. All right, good to go. Now we'll take our 3 8 inch wrench, break it loose. Unscrew that bolt, and then comes out the follower nut tool. Fantastic. Now we'll go ahead and do the same with the other one. We'll get it prepped, right? Gonna line up those notches with the follower nut tool. Okay, it's just hand snug, that's perfect. Now we'll go ahead, take the other mag tube spring and insert that now. Same thing. Just make a quick visual down here, all right? Good, it's lined up. Now I'm going to take my follower nut tool with the actual follower, get it captured on the end right there. Slide it in. Definitely do not cross those threads. Make sure you got them lined up. That tension's going to fight you a little bit. And that's why it's good to thread it in by hand. You can feel it as it's going in. If you get any weird resistance, definitely back it off and start over. All right, snug by hand. Take our deep socket and go ahead and snug it up. Give it a good half turn there. Perfect. Now we'll take our 3 8 inch Allen key, go ahead and break that bolt loose and remove our follower nut tool. Real handy to have this. All right, cool. Now we've got our replacements in there. Now let's put the rest of the KSG back together. All right, guys, now we need to go ahead and change over, get our muzzle plate and vice block back in the vise and get set up to put the rest of it back together. All right, go ahead and tighten up the vise on the vice block with the muzzle plate inside. Make sure you got the muzzle plate in there. Good and even, squared, nice and snug. There we go. All right, now we can go ahead and insert the KSG back in to the muzzle plate, just like so. All right, now we're gonna install our breacher barrel nut. You can see all those spikes on there. That's the breaching factor. It allows you to locate on a door jam real precisely. So really nice add-on addition. Also good for a nice muzzle punch if you had to. And then we'll take our rock set, which has got some really great high temp properties. It's good up to 1500 degrees, so it'll maintain its actual holding power up to that temperature. But it's got removable properties, just like blue 242 Loctite, which we're going to use here in a second on some of the other components here. But first, we're going to take a rock set, put it on the inside of the breacher barrel nut. Go ahead and do that. And we sell rock set if you need it. We recommend it on all of our muzzle brake applications. I put a good healthy amount in there, especially since we're gonna be putting this on hand tight. Now it does thread on real nicely. You can see it, hear it. That looks awesome. 
Alright, so it is hand tight, but I recommend you take one of those little uh, one of those little jar topper grippy pads, set it on there and give it a good nice turn. That's real solid. All right, nice. Now we're gonna take our bayonet spikes, put blue 242 Loctite on those threads. You can use a good healthy amount. Same on the other side. Blue 242 removable Loctite. Good healthy amount, these are really big threads. See it coming together already, look at that. Now we're gonna take our three quarter inch crescent wrench and really snug them down. And you're gonna alternate. Alright, once they're good and snug, you'll know it. There we go. Solid. Man, that looks awesome already. Look at that. Woo! Alright. Alright guys, near the finish line now. So let's go ahead and pop it out, flip it around, put that Picatinny rail back on. Alright. <laughs> Be careful not to uh, stab yourself. Get some serious hardware on the end of that barrel now. Alright. Get the vise block and the muzzle plate lined up. Now we can go ahead and drop our rail in place, make sure those holes are lined up, tighten up our vise, use it as a nice little rest. Might as well use it since we got it. Now we'll go ahead and take our blue 242 Loctite. We'll put a little bit of Loctite on each of these threads. You don't want the rail coming off or rattling loose during operation. There's only two screws holding it in place. All right. Go ahead and get those threads started by hand. Then take our T-handle wrench, two and a half millimeter. All right, and snug them up. Usually takes about 24 hours for blue Loctite to cure. Good to go. Let's pop it out of the vise and take a look. Wow, that is awesome <laughs> look at that all right now look at that man now we're ready for some action and destruction dang look at that that is cool and then down here we've got our new followers which look fantastic look at that high vis orange just amazing really excited about all of this man this is fun i'm really enjoying the ksg this is a whole new project really loving it hope you guys enjoyed that top to bottom real down and dirty installation. There you go guys, a fierce upgrade for your kel KSG shotgun. This is by far my favorite setup for the front, the breacher barrel nut and these two bayonet spikes. Really cool, freaking hardcore hardware. I'm loving it. And then the PTFE coated, you know I like PTFE, you know I like lubricity. It's all about the PTFE, mag tube followers. You don't want them getting stuck up here. So I like it, it's a fantastic improvement and they're orange, high vis, easy to see. I'm all about it. We got some new stuff on the way too, trigger pull. I can't wait to share that one with you guys. Feels phenomenal. All right, guys, looking forward to your feedback on this. Thank you, Encarbo Brother, for your ideas and your support. And as always, happy shooting.